Hello, my name is Larry Isles. I am the senior faculty member with the Thomas Rivers University Career and Experiential Learning Department. Today's topic is going to be about LinkedIn and social media for alumni. Congratulations if you're a new alumni and hello to fellow alumni as well. Today we're going to be talking briefly about your LinkedIn profile, what you can do during these times of COVID to really work on your profile and make it top notch. A lot of us are at home right now, we might have some extra time in our hands. Perfect opportunity to do a chore, and this chore is LinkedIn profiles. LinkedIn is ubiquitous with resumes these days. Employers expect that you'll have a resume, but they're gonna Google your name if they're about to hire you or do a candidacy search. Most likely, LinkedIn is the platform that you'll use. It's free, it's fantastic, uh, and it's easy uh, to, um, to add to. So, Today's topic is going to be also part of a YouTube uh, channel that you'll be able to uh, interact with me live as well. I do want to mention at the outset, all alumni can make career appointments with the TRU Career and Experiential Learning Department. You have access from the time you graduate till the end of time during pandemics. You're welcome to join us and make an appointment. Go to tru.ca backslash CEL. Uh, sign up with our program called Career Connections, and then you can make an appointment. So LinkedIn, the great value of LinkedIn, if you haven't had a chance to explore it, is one, 98% of recruiters in Canada, in big companies, so 50 or more, use the LinkedIn platform. Uh, it's a fantastic place to find jobs, to get noticed, to connect with network, uh, in your network, to find industry professionals. Uh, to look for career change or even a new career. It's not super good for part-time work. So if you're looking for part-time local work, it's not the best platform for that. But for professional work and networking is the best. So a couple of hints for you is one, your picture should be really welcoming and friendly. And it says to the employer, hello, I'm gonna get along with other people in your organization. Because the biggest fear employers have, have is you might not get along with everybody. So your picture is really important. I see a lot of pictures look like this, not friendly. Uh, and no picture at all isn't really good either. So the first thing you wanna focus on is picture. The second thing you wanna focus on is underneath your picture, there's a little tagline. Um, a lot of new students say student at TRU, but that tagline is a searchable field in LinkedIn. What I mean by that is employers, they buy into something called LinkedIn recruiter and they can set up fields to search for candidates. So underneath your picture in your name, that's a searchable field, and that's your opportunity to be really creative. So superstar marketing guru, uh, career Jedi, whatever you like to put. You wanna use words that your industry uses, so you'll get picked up in a keyword search, but you also wanna show your creativity as well. The next section that employers really like to see is your profile section. And this is the power of LinkedIn. It's not just taking your resume and dumping into LinkedIn, it's adding media. If you said your superpower is writing, so that's one of your key skills in your resume, you should populate the profile section in your LinkedIn portfolio with writing examples. That proves your superpower. If Superman landed in front of us today and we said, hey, dude, what's your superpower? And he said, I can fly. And we went, that's awesome. And then we said, well, let's see it. Show me how you fly. And he says, actually, I, I can't fly. Um, it's the same as skill sets and resumes. If your superpower or skill set is communication and writing, then you can upload media in, in the LinkedIn platform for free. And then employers will click on it. If you give a reason for employers to click, they will click. If they have their phone, they, I just showed my bank number, they will click, 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 click. So give them reasons to click. In your resume, once you set up your LinkedIn portfolio, you would include the LinkedIn link to your portfolio as a live link. In these days of COVID, most employers will be looking at resumes online. So if you give them a reason to click in your cover, line, cover letter and resume, they will click on it. It's fantastic. So in your portfolio, you'll see a little bit about yourself, try to be really, really creative. Uh, even accountants can be creative in this field. You list out some of the major skill sets you have and you would upload some media to back up those skill sets. 
it should be about three to 400 words in that portfolio section. The other sections are largely like your resume, but you can go into a lot more detail. Your work experience, your volunteer experience, projects you worked on in school, projects you worked on as a professional since you've graduated. Those projects should be highlighted and also you would include the information uh, what the project was and upload the project if possible or links to a project. The next section is recommendations. This has fallen out of fashion over the years. Uh, 20 years ago, people would get lit written recommendations. We don't do that much anymore. But LinkedIn's provided a way you can ask for a colleague or a team member or a supervisor to write you a recommendation. It will pop up in your LinkedIn platform. And employers in the LinkedIn uh, stats, you have a 50% ch more chance to be noticed by an employer if you have personal recommendations from coworkers or colleagues or if you're a new graduate, even groups that you've worked with. The next thing you want to do is groups you follow. You should follow every group in your profession, either that you're planning to go into or you're currently in. And then you want to be active in these groups. Post something. What's happening with the tourism industry in times of COVID-19? Perhaps you uh, belong to the Camels Hospitality Group. You can post in there and be active in your profession, even though you may not be working in that profession yet. Lastly, networking. Ignore job titles. If there's a job you think you want to do, you can look at grads who graduated from your program and you can do a search in LinkedIn for TRU. All those graduate names would come up, then you can look at what they're doing. They might have had a job you thought, that's the job I want, but you didn't know that was the title. And then you could connect with that person and go, hey, Larry, you're a career counselor at Tom Service University. I've always wanted to be that because who wouldn't be, want to be a career counselor at TRU? Um, and then they could connect with me and I would tell them my career path. So it's a great way to connect with people that you never could have connected with before. It's a great way to keep in touch with alumni and find out what they're up to and ignore the job title. Read what they say, what the jobs they've had in the past. What was their first job? What was their third job? Where are they at now? Look at their career progression and then connect with them to ask them some questions. It's a wonderful way to do networking. So, but don't take my word on this. Today, we have a special guest. We have Andrea Webb, who's a senior strategist with LinkedIn. So we have someone from LinkedIn that's joining us today. So, Andrea, over to you, and thank you very much for joining us. So, uh, folks, we are lucky today to have with us Andrea Webb from LinkedIn. Uh, good afternoon, Andrea. Hi, thanks for having Hi. me. Thanks for being here. Today we're speaking to TRU students who have just graduated this spring. And um, they've been listening to me talk for a little bit about how to use social media platforms, but the best one of them all is LinkedIn. It's, becoming, it's become ubiquitous with the application process, uh, which is great. So um, the first thing I thought I'd ask you is, what would your top advice be for new graduates using the LinkedIn platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So uh, first, congratulations to everyone who is graduating. <laughs> Very exciting. I think some of the, the best advice that I would give and, and that I've received in using LinkedIn is first to create a, a strong profile. So that is your, uh, you know, online profile of record. So having a, a strong profile is really the first step to take to make sure that you're you're on the right foot. And then secondly is engaging on the network. You know, especially these days where we're kind of working in this virtual world. So thinking of ways that you can connect with potential employers and, and other people that are out there that can potentially open up a door for you in this new chapter. Yeah, that's uh, one challenge that we have is convincing students how important that profile section is. Yeah, I, I think there's a few tips that I can share um, in terms of why it's so important. I think a uh, profile photo is especially is really critical. Like when you are reaching out to people on LinkedIn, either sending them a connection request or uh, connecting with them to ask for a virtual coffee, showing that you are a real person. So having a professional photo really helps and goes a long way. Um, some other things you can do is adding that headline. So customizing your headline is sort of that mini elevator pitch, if you will, and tells potential employers or people that you're looking to connect with what you're all about. And that can really help um, make that connection or give them that context as to why you're reaching out and, and why you would add value to your, their network. Right. 
Um, yeah, so I, I agree. Those are top ones that we work a lot with our students on as well. And for students that don't have elevators in smaller communities, it could just be a hallway conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so from the recruiter side of the platform, now this is one that the, maybe the students aren't aware of, how recruiters use the platform to recruit. Mm -hmm. So what, what, are, what are they looking at, do you think, from their end of it? Yeah, so on my team, I work on the customer success team. I, I lead the Toronto team and we work with clients all across Canada <clears throat> in different industries and segments. And we actually help them use our flagship talent solutions tool, which is called LinkedIn Recruiter. And so we work with recruiters all the time. And what they're looking for is they're actually searching people's profiles. So anything that uh, new grads can do to add some of those keywords that are relevant to the industry that they're interested in can be so helpful for recruiters to find them on LinkedIn. So one thing that they can do is uh, writing about projects or things that they've worked on or things that they've done in part-time jobs that are relevant to their field of study or where they're hoping to go can help bump them up in the search results for the recruiters that um, are, are looking for them in that right. space. Another thing that they can do is update their job interests on LinkedIn. So there is a section on LinkedIn where you can add uh, different preferences for the types of work that you're looking for and that can help uh, recruiters find um, to find them and then one thing I would also recommend is adding at least five skills to their profile because those are going to come up in that search and that will help them be uh, found by recruiters as well. All right um, so we've been talking a lot with the class about keyword density uh, populating their whole profile as much as possible is that something the employers use from their end of it in the algorithm? Yes. So it is part of the algorithm in both search when recruiters are looking for uh, talent and also in our job matching. Oh. So what happens is that our jobs, when an employer posts a job on LinkedIn, they of course post the job description, but they also include skills and um, some of the keywords that are most relevant or that are most important for them in that hire that they're looking to make and then we'll match that up with people on LinkedIn so you're absolutely right there is um, validity to that connection uh, so uh, keep spreading the good word <laughs> see folks you, you, you heard it from <laughs> someone else just not me so um, so what do you hear from recruiters um, when they're looking at applicant profiles so more around issues or, or little pet things that they wish uh, people would pay more attention to? Yeah, I really, really like that question. Thank you for asking it. And I'm sure a lot of our clients will appreciate uh, this knowledge being shared out as well, making their lives easier. <clears throat> so I think one of the things that it would be is, is really helpful or will be helpful for recruiters is that the keyword part is kind of, let's say step one. So adding that to your profile. The second piece is building out your um, comprehension or experience with that skill or experience because it's one thing to put it on your profile, but then when the recruiter gets to your profile, there sometimes they might not be too sure in terms of your proficiency with that particular skill or keyword. So anything that new grads can do to highlight their experience or demonstrate their experience with that skill can only be beneficial for both people. All right. Yeah, so I, I think that's um, important for the students to realize that almost to put the employer hat on and what they're looking for. And as most university students, one day they'll be in a position of hiring most likely as well. So that's our hope. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what would, uh, one thing we still working with is convincing students to use platforms like LinkedIn. Um, the evolution of LinkedIn has been amazing. Uh, in my 20 years in the career field, we, we were waiting for that thing that was gonna replace or really complement the resume. Um, what are the real strong compelling reasons you have to tell people to use the LinkedIn platform that it's really become part of the applicant system? And you, that, or I'll rephrase, in your opinion, has it become really a big part of the applicant uh, process? Yes, for sure. So we are the largest network 
of our kind in sort of the professional networking space. Uh, there really isn't any other network quite like us uh, in terms of, of the sheer um, volume of members that we have. And it, it really has become more of an ecosystem, <laughs> if oh, you right. will, and, and not really, you know, just some place that you go to look for jobs, which has been really incredible to see that transformation happen in the last like five and a half or so years that I've been with the company. And it's really this kind of living, breathing um, online marketplace for people to, of course, still find jobs, but also connect to learn, to share. Uh, so there's a lot of value on LinkedIn um, outside of job search. Like there's a ton of value behind that, um, but there's so much more going on. And every single day I'm seeing more features and things being added to the tool on the platform that are extremely beneficial, both for people that are actively searching, of people that are um, employed and are also looking to give back to the community. So the, the mobile experience as well has completely transformed. So I would recommend if, if everyone does not have the app yet to download it check it out uh, and there's some really cool social uh, features that are, are coming soon that um, will be um, I think very well received by the new grads but I can't share right. too much yet I was gonna say can you tell us you know well, we all promise all about a thousand of us we won't tell anybody <laughs> um, I, I will follow up I'll send some follow-up materials uh, in a couple of days okay yeah. That's good. I like the hook. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Stay on the platform. There's cool it's stuff very coming. Exciting. Pardon? I said it's very exciting. I'll share more soon. Um, one of the things that's great about working at LinkedIn is we get to be part of all the whitelists. So we get to test everything out before it goes to GA. Cool. Um, on a different topic, sort of, um, over the years, do you have any favorite taglines that you've seen right under the picture, the first item that you know, employers will read? Ooh, good one. Uh, you know, I think I love seeing things where people are, are really genuine and it's balanced. So the great thing about LinkedIn is it is a professional network, but you also have that opportunity to customize it and make it your own. So I've seen people call themselves like, you know, recruiting ninjas or like talent magician, you know, so some people get pretty creative. For me, mine is talent leader, travel queen, connector of people, she, her, hers. So I've got my pronouns in there. So, I mean, it's, it's really up to you in terms of your comfort of what you want to put there. But, um, I think if, if you're, if you do some searches, you'll come up with some pretty cool stuff on there and get some inspiration. And I'm happy to share a few profiles if you'd like as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. And I've seen the, the travel queen on yours. Uh, yeah. And it actually makes you stop for a second. Think about it. And hopefully then if I was recruiting, I would read on. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's the whole point of the, the headline. So you have your profile photo, you have your headline, you get to your summary, it tells you a little bit more, and then your reader continues on through your experience. So it's, it's really your story online. Yeah, it's a really cool part of it as well. Um, so the last question I have, and thanks again for your time, is because this is a career lecture, folks are gonna wonder how you got started in your career and how you found your path to LinkedIn. Yeah, great question. So. This is, um, it certainly wasn't a linear path. It, it kind of looks more like this, <laughs> um, as many uh, career stories are. Uh, so I think I really started fresh out of school, um, university, uh, and was like many people trying to figure out what that next step was. And um, I really just wanted to get some experience. So I, I worked at a large uh, insurance company and that was great. I learned a ton in those two years that I worked there. And then I got to the point where I'm like, okay, this is really awesome. I've got a foundation uh, in terms of understanding the business world and how things run. Um, perhaps I'm ready for, for something new. And I, that's when I actually got into recruiting. So I was a recruiter uh, yeah, before joining LinkedIn and I 
just kind of fell in love with it and um, was really passionate about helping people connect with their uh, dream jobs and also helping my uh, clients hire the right talent to achieve their business objectives. And that just kind of naturally led me to LinkedIn because I was such a strong advocate for the tool. I used it every day uh, in my job as a recruiter. And then I, I joined as a, a customer success manager about five and a half years ago. So I think some of the best advice I received is just, you know, following your passion and what you really love to do. And if you can bring those two together and make that work, then that's uh, really where the magic happens. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had uh, the, the luck part and also the skill set at the same time. Um, for me, uh, the LinkedIn platform is amazing. I, I've watched its growth from the beginning and we were wondering if this was going to be the one. Full disclosure, I thought Pinterest was going to be the one. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the, the new amazing resume tool. <laughs> um, but no, it didn't work out that way. So I would have <laughs> bet wrong. But it's yeah, still we, around. But it, it is still around. If you need a career <laughs> recipe, that's the place to go. <laughs> Um, but no, I've been super impressed with the LinkedIn platform, and it's one we promote all the time to, to students. So I want to thank you for your time today. I know it's very busy for you, and especially this time during the pandemic. So I really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'll send over some follow up materials, and good luck, everybody. Okay. Thanks very much. We'll see Andrea, thank you so much. That is valuable information. Yeah, right from the source, folks. So there are LinkedIn. Uh, from their own words, uh, thank you, Andrew Webb, very much for joining us today and providing that excellent uh, understanding of LinkedIn. So once again, folks, um, LinkedIn is a powerful tool. It's fantastic to make connections. It's wonderful for networking. It's great for looking for jobs. And it's a perfect way to upload some media to back up your superpowers. So I do encourage you to use a LinkedIn platform if you haven't. It is becoming co-joined with resumes in the modern world, especially during this pandemic, uh, online op opportunities like this will be used more than ever by recruiters. Once again, 98% of recruiters use the LinkedIn platform to Google search their candidates or even to find candidates. Lastly, on behalf of the Thompson Rivers University Korean Experiential Learning Department, thanks for joining us today. My name is Larry Isles. I'm a senior faculty member with the Career and Experiential Learning Department. You can book an appointment with us and we can explore all these activities and more. Uh, www.tru.ca backslash CAL. Once again, uh, thank you for joining us today on Career TV. I don't have a soundtrack or a band yet, but I'm working on it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye-bye.